It's now my honor and privilege to present the 2017 VFW Armed Forces Award to retired Army General Richard A. Cody. He wore the Army green for 36 years. He's a master aviator with over 5,000 hours of flight time in Cobras, Apache, and Black Hawk helicopters. And his overseas assignments and deployments include Albania, South Korea, and Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and Iraq. And he has commanded at the platoon, the battalion, brigade, and regiment levels. Was assistant division commander for the 4th Infantry Division. He's the commanding general of the 101st Airborne Division. All right. <laughs> he held that position from 2004 to his military retirement in 2008. He was the Vice Chief of Staff of the United States Army. And General Cody entered West Point at the height of the Vietnam War when the Army didn't have mental health assessments or military family unique programs that focused on the home front as well as post-deployment reintegration of soldiers with their families. And he took hard lessons learned and helped to transform the new all-volunteer Army into one that is more lethal on the battlefield than any force in history. And the Army recognizes that taking care of troops goes hand in hand with taking care of their mission. And this was especially important in the days, weeks, months following the crisis in substandard patient care at Walter Reed Army Medical Center. The general would right that ship by holding leadership accountable and by installing better checks and balances, which had a secondary effect of making all military medicine better. The VFW Armed Forces Award has been presented annually since 1964 to individuals and organizations in recognition of extraordinary national security achievements that reflect the highest traditions of service of the armed forces and to our nation. As the national commander of America's largest and oldest major war veterans organization, we greatly appreciate what the general did for all soldiers and their families and for what he continues to do for those who serve through his hand-on involvement with Homes for Our Troops, the Intrepid Fallen Heroes Fund, and its Centers of Excellence, and the hope of the Warriors Organization. Ladies and gentlemen, auxiliary members, guests, it's with great pride and honor that the Veterans of Foreign Wars of the United States presents its 2017 Armed Forces Award to Life, member VFW Post 792 in Vermont, the former Vice Chief of Staff of the United States Army, and the current Chairman of the Board for Homes for Our Troops, General Dick Cody. General. Armed Forces Award and citation awarded to General Richard A. Cody, U.S. Army, retired. In special recognition and sincere appreciation to General Richard A. Cody, U.S. Army, retired for ensuring the hard lessons learned from Vietnam were used to transform a new all-volunteer Army into one more lethal on the battlefield than any force in history. Yet an Army that recognizes taking care of the troops goes hand in hand with taking care of the mission. For creating mental health assessments and military family unique programs that focused on the home front as well as post deployed deployment reintegration of soldiers with their families for starting up the army's wounded warrior program and for continuing to serve our wounded ill and injured and the families of the fallen his selfless service to nation is true to the ideals, traditions, and values of the veterans of foreign wars of the United States. In witness whereof, we have hereunto set our hands and the official seal of the veterans of foreign wars of the United States, the 24th day of July, 2017, approved by the National Council of Administration, signed by Brian Duffy, Commander-in-Chief, and Robert E. Wallace, Adjutant General.
Commander in Chief Duffy uh, and the entire VFW, uh, thanks for all you continue to do for our veterans and their families. Uh, you all continue to serve, even though you've taken the uniform off, and you're making a difference across this country by telling our soldiers, airmen, Marines, sailors, and Coast Guardsmen a story. You know, when I look out on this huge crowd and I start imagining every war and every combat situation all of you have been in, I have to believe if ISIS was here, standing here, they wouldn't come again. They wouldn't even want to deal with you people. It's a great honor for me to be with men and women who chose to don the cloth of this nation and have said to America, in your time of need, send me. Each one of you veterans, when you enlisted, or many of you were drafted, when all that happened, you wrote a check to, made payable to the American people. You didn't know what the amount due was going to be. It was an open-ended check. It could have been from zero to the ultimate sacrifice. But that makes you special. It makes you special Americans, and it's something that all Americans should continue to celebrate. Because I firmly believe that you all represent the best of America. Through all of your wars, World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, Grenada, Panama, Commander Duffy's War, Desert Storm, and now our longest war in history, the global war on terrorism in Iraq, Afghanistan, the Philippines, and the Middle East. Through all of those conflicts, you showed Americans courage, selfless service, but most importantly, patriotism. Everywhere you veterans have marched and where your boots have left a footprint, the light of freedom has shined even brighter. I want to tell you a couple quick stories about VFW. Um, I didn't become a member until 1977. But in Desert Storm, when we were coming home, I was commanding a Apache Battalion of the 101st Airborne Division Air Assault. And we were the, one of the last flights to come back. We'd been there about nine and a half months. In fact, we were the first ones in and the last ones out. Sound familiar? Uh, and we got to watch while we were waiting. Trust me, it was about four or five days waiting to come home. And we got to watch all these welcome home ceremonies. And America really had rallied around uh, our Desert Storm veterans. Uh, really, I think, because they felt a little guilty they never welcomed home our Vietnam veterans properly. So we're watching all this, and I can remember some of my younger troops saying, sir, we're not getting into the U.S. until about 1 o'clock in the morning. You think there, anybody will be there? And we landed at Bangor, Maine at 1 o'clock in the morning. I had 300 soldiers on this flight. And we had to get off because they had to refuel, and we're coming down and lined up all the way from where we got off the plane into the uh, waiting area at 1 o'clock in the morning where veterans, VFW members, in a cordon, thanking every one of our soldiers for their service. And I watched my young troops take their chocolate chip floppy hats and exchange them with Vietnam veterans' caps all the way down. I don't know how many of my soldiers became VFW members that day, but quite a few of them did. But it moved me to watch people that didn't know us, 1 o'clock in the morning, and it was arranged by that post there at Bangor, Maine. And if you're out there, God bless you and thank you. My second one is, as they've said earlier, I'm chairman of the board of Homes for Our Troops. We build specially adapted mortgage-free homes across the country for the severely wounded of the Iraq-Afghanistan wars. At every small town in the U.S. where we build a home, the first place my people go to is a VFW post. At every key ceremony, the VFW is there, but more importantly, they help organize with the Patriot Riders, the motorcycle Harley guys, 
and we'll have 150 to 200 motorcycles at every one of those ceremonies leading in that wounded soldier and their family to their brand new home. Continuing to give back and remind America how important service to this nation is. I truly thank you for this great honor. I humbly accept it on behalf of the thousands of young soldiers and NCOs and officers who I really had the honor and privilege of serving with. But more importantly, I want to thank you all for your service to our great nation, for what you have done. May God bless you. May God bless our troops who are around the world today keeping us all safe. And may God bless this great nation. Thank you all. Yet another example, the general mentioned, about a VFW effort at an airport in Bangor, Maine, as he said, at the wee hours of the morning, an effort that you did out of the compassion and the love for America and her troops, not to be mentioned some years later by a general at a podium, but because it was the right thing. Never discount the importance of your efforts.